Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Turn to your neighbor, tell them this is your night. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Would you grab your swords and turn to Galatians chapter 6? Praise God. <clears throat> Is everybody there? Galatians chapter 6. In verse 7. Galatians 6 and verse 7. Would you read it with me please? Do not be what? Deceived. deceived. Everybody knows that Satan's greatest weapon is deception. You know, people aren't bad, they're just deceived. And deception promotes wickedness, promotes evil. That's why God says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. That's lack of truth. Again, it's, it's this area of deception and so many people are being deceived in, in multiple ways. It says, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. In other words, he knows it all, sees it all. Nothing's hidden from him. He knows what your thoughts are. He knows what your heart is. He knows what your attitude, your motive is. He knows when you're manipulating. He knows when you're exaggerating. He knows when you're lying. There isn't anything hidden from the Lord. Nothing. He says, so God's not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life. In other words, spirit here is also associated with breath. Because the spirit of God is the breath of God. So when we sow into the spirit, we are actually sowing with breath. As we praise and worship, we're sowing. As we decree the word, we're sowing. And so many people don't get that because they're deceived in the arena that they may know the word, may even know the page numbers, but choose not to decree it or worship. And they're still reaping what they've sowed in the flesh. Listen, the word says he is in Christ as a new creation. Old things pass away, all things become new. That's according to your cooperation with Christ. You know, so many people go, why hasn't God done this? And why hasn't God done this? And God's going, why haven't you done this? It takes cooperation. Without cooperation, there's not a manifestation of freedom, is there? So in this, he says something very powerful. And he says in verse 9, And let us not grow weary while doing what? Good. So in other words, don't grow weary while you're sowing in the Spirit. Don't quit. Don't get sidetracked. Don't give up just because you're not seeing what you want to see yet. He says, don't grow weary while doing good. What's the next? For what? In due season, we shall reap if we don't what? Lose heart. So one of the things that the enemy wants to do, so you're sowing, you're doing the right thing, you're doing good, right? So what the enemy wants to do is cause you to lose heart or stop. He's trying to distract you, prevent you from continuing to sow so you can outrun your reaping. Why? Because there's something specifically waiting for you. The word season has to do with time. 
Season and time are always together. They're married. Season and time. In fact, the Bible says the first thing in Genesis chapter 1, 1, it says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. But in reality, the first thing God created was time. That's why he said, in the beginning. So in the beginning, God created time. Then he created the seasons, and everything is coordinated together. They're married together, times and seasons. And, and in this, so many times, people don't realize that one of the things that God is trying to do is get us to a place where we do know specific times and seasons and the things that's going on. So we do not lose heart. But see, that's where we know promises. He says what he says will come to pass. What his promise is, it's covenant. So you and I must maintain covenant for the promise to be fulfilled. So when we're waiting on God for something, I can guarantee you he's waiting on you for something. He's always wanting you to sow. Sow. And it's not about giving money. It's about sowing in the Spirit. Does everybody understand it? The more you sow in the Spirit, the more you reap the presence of God. That's why we worship. That's why we gather together. Why? Because sometimes it's just hard for you to do it by yourself, isn't there? And the Bible says when two touch and agree, it comes to pass. And when two or more gather together, the Lord is there. So he's in this room walking around. Well, I don't feel him because you're led by, you live by your feelings. You must live by Faith and truth. God is not just the God of feeling. He's the God of truth. So in this, we must believe who he is. Amen? See, because if you don't believe who he is, then you don't know who you are either. Amen. And then you always walk in confusion. You're still trying to figure out things in your own carnal mind. Your intellect. Intellect is the greatest stumbling block to mankind. People are tripping over their thoughts all day long. Reasoning is a guillotine of faith. The realm of reason is all over. We must overcome those things. One day we're going to get out of this realm of reason. And it'll be so much of a realm of reality, you won't give a hoot. So we are going to reap in due season if we do not lose heart. If we don't quit if we are steadfast if we fight no matter what to maintain position in first peter chapter 5 first peter chapter 5 you know we were born in this realm and there was so much Garbage that was applied to us. So much garbage that we inherited. You know, many of us inherited the belief systems of our parents. Religious belief systems. Some of those things were way out in left field. Some of our parents didn't believe in anything. So, you know, as young children, we inherited so much stuff that... God is trying to bring us to that place where those things are severed. And, you know, uh, when a, a belief system is flawed, your perception is flawed. So what happens is your, your perception is always trying to promote your belief system, and your belief system is always trying to promote your perception if it's flawed. Is everybody okay? In 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 5, it says, Likewise, what? You younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the what? The proud. But he gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in when? Due time. If you don't lose what? Heart. See, that due time is associated with due season. He said, casting your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Well, let me tell you something. There are so many people with just 
grocery bags full of cares. And some people just don't want to cast those cares on the Lord. They just want to hold on to them and pet them. They take them out of the garbage bag or the grocery bag and look at it. And, and then they look with someone else they can share it with. Do you have one of these too? Wow. And after they talk about it and promote it and pet it and water it and it grows and they put it back in the bag and then they look for another one. Amen. See, they're so busy holding their own cares, they can't maintain relationship. They're too busy in survival mode. See, these cares put you in survival mode. When we're to cast those cares on the Lord and get in surrender mode where God can move. See, when you're holding those things, you're relying on your own strength. And it begins to get heavy after a while because, you know, you're, you're a caretaker. You love taking everyone else's cares. And then you want to go around and share them. The thing is, is you become weak after a period of time. You become oppressed. You lose heart. You can't even sense a season coming. And you begin to drift further and further away. And the enemy infiltrates. And he begins to bring fear and worry, anxiety, stress, confusion, then envy, jealousy, anger, and rage. And those are nothing but fruits of carnality. Because we have drifted from the presence of the Lord. And one of the things the Lord wants to do is get us into that place. He says, if you'll humble yourself, cast your cares upon him. So you got to be humble to cast your cares. Pride loves cares. Yeah, man, I got this. You ain't got nothing. You got a stick of dynamite that's about to blow up soon and put you out. See, the devil looks for access. Cares are access to your soul. I'm going to say that again. Cares are access to your soul. And what he wants to do is access your soul so that your thought patterns are no longer according to the standard divine order of Christ. So you're relying more on how you feel. You can't hear correctly. You can't see correctly. You become religious. And you may begin to hear a message, oh, I heard that already. Oh, I heard that already. When in that message there's so much more, you're just not willing to hear it. See, because the last time you only listened to it, you really didn't hear it. And verse 8, what does it say? Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may what? Let's see, what's he trying to do? Prevent you from reaching your due season. And by doing that, he prevents you from fulfilling your mission here. It says, resist him steadfast in the faith. Faith is spiritual sight. It's not blind. Knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. Why? So you're immovable. So you're what? Immovable. So we're to submit, we're to be humble, we're to be alert, we're to be consistent, we're to be steadfast in the faith which is spiritual sight. Let me share with you. <laughs> this may sound weird to you, but anyways. We're to keep one eye on the Lord. And, hello? At all times. Always keeping one eye on the Lord. And one eye on the other things. One eye should always be on the Lord. Always. Always. Now, there's a time when two eyes are on the Lord, and that's when he's near. Always the Lord should always, there should be always one eye on the Lord. Always. 
No matter what you do, no matter where you go, whatever decision you make, there's always one eye on the Lord and one eye on everything else you're doing. See, too many people are setting two eyes on the things that they're doing and never even considering the Lord. And then they miss what God's trying to do, trying to rescue them. They get too busy caught up in their life. Again, we put two eyes on him when he's near. Again, the devil will interfere with your due season. We're to keep one eye on the journey and one eye on the destination. Has everybody got it? Why not one eye on the journey that's pertaining to the things we're doing now and one eye on the destination where we're reaching and that's where Christ is at. When we lose those, when we are interrupted, we get cross-eyed. And then we end up stumbling. It's like the lights just went out. Did anybody ever hear the lights are out and nobody's home? No, the lights are out and nobody's home. <laughs> In Psalm 16. Due season. You want to reach your due season. That's a part of the journey. Psalm 16. Is everybody there? Verse 5, O Lord, you are the portion of my inheritance and my cup. You maintain my lot. Yes, uh, the, the lines have fallen to me in pleasant places. Yes, I have a good inheritance. I will bless the Lord who has given me what? Counsel. My heart also instructs me in the what? Night seasons. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be what? Moved. So the Lord is always before us. In other words, there's always one eye on him, which is associated with destination. So everybody got it. And the other eye is on the things of journey, which is associated with the things that you're doing now. And then when the Lord comes before you, both eyes go on him when he's near. Is everybody all right? In uh, Ecclesiastics 3. It is really a book in the Bible. <laughs> For some of us, I heard, what the heck is that? Hallelujah. It's right after Proverbs. You don't have to search too much. In chapter 3 and verse 1, it says, To everything there is a what? A season. Where there's a season, it's associated with time, isn't there? So it says, To everything there is a season. And it then what's the first thing? It says, A time, because they're married to one another. A time for every purpose under heaven. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck what is planted, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, a time to build up, a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, a time to gather stones, a time to embrace, a time to refrain from embracing, a time to gain, a time to lose, a time to keep, a time to throw away, a time to tear, a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. So we see that there is times and seasons. Everything has its season or a time. It's predestined for certain things 
to occur. In other words, if when you are, let's say you came into this room and there was no lights on, well, you chose to turn the lights on. Okay, so something occurred, didn't it? Because you met. When you came here, and you met something, which was a switch, which manifested light. In a time and a season, there's always a meeting of God. In fact, that's what the feasts of the Lord are. There are times and seasons where God brought visitations and manifestations of his love and his purpose. In Hebrews chapter 1, So it's going to take cooperation, isn't it? And you're going to have to maintain and be encouraged so you don't lose heart, so you can reach that due season that God wants to meet you, prosper you, and fulfill a part of your journey so that you can continue on with it. It's almost like stopping, it being in the desert, and, and you find a coffee shop. And you pull in there and go, wow, iced coffee, all right. Well, you just met your due season to continue on the journey. Amen? I say that because when we were in Israel, there was deserts all, we were going through the desert. And it was amazing to me that they had coffee shops in the desert. So I could stop and get iced coffee and sandals. <laughs> Guess that's all you needed out there. So that means that you've got to be consistent. Amen. That means you got to be vigilant. You got to be able. You got to be able to see it all the way through. Ezekiel thirty-four. In verse I will make a covenant of peace with them and cause wild beasts to cease from the land. And they will dwell safely in the wilderness and sleep in the woods. I'll make them and the places all around my hill a what? Blessing. I will cause showers to come down on in their season. There will be a showers of Blessing. So in this place, you can understand that in these due seasons, there is a shower of blessing. So all of a sudden, something happens. You're sowing. You're doing what you're supposed to be doing. You haven't lost heart. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, the shower of blessing comes. And you're trying to figure out how you caused it. Man, how did I cause this? You didn't. You just maintained, cooperated, and didn't lose heart so that you can reach that due season so that shower of blessing could come. And that's just the beginning of it. God wants to meet us with showers of blessing. You just don't know what's going to happen. But I can tell you, in between these showers of blessing, there's going to be a battle going on. There's a fight, there's a, a spirit of discouragement, there's a spirit of distraction, there's a spirit of fear, there's a spirit of oppression, Confu all of these things, and it seems sometimes that everything wrong is going on, and you're trying to figure out what you did wrong. Sometimes you didn't do anything wrong. It's just an attack. But you know, there's something that Jesus showed us he walked on water. We're to walk on these troubles. We're to rise above it. We're, we're not to allow these troubles to mislead us. We're to be led by the Spirit, not pushed by the devil. Amen? Hallelujah. <laughs> In Leviticus 23. You want to reach your season of blessing. That is your due season. Leviticus 23. 
you know, the Jews were celebrating always the Feast of the Lord. They celebrated the Feast of the Lord as a rehearsal of things to come. There are seven Feasts of the Lord. The seven means complete and perfect. Jesus was the only one who could fulfill the feasts. And he came already to fulfill the first four feasts. Again, the next feast to be fulfilled is called the Feast of Trumpets, which is the removal of the church from the earth. And you certainly don't want to miss that bus ride out of here. Because then you'd be left in tribulation and all hell will be broken out. It says in verse 4 that these feasts, these are the seven feasts, these are the feasts of the Lord, holy convocations, which you shall proclaim at their appointed times. Each, there are multiple feasts associated with seasons. God ordained that. And in, the, in that, the Israelites celebrated these feasts. In preparation, there were rehearsals for what is to come. It's amazing. You want to witness to a Jew? You start talking to them about the Feast of the Lord. When you start talking to them about the Feast of the Lord, because almost every uh, Jew knows about the Feast of the Lord, then you can start explaining that Jesus came to fulfill those feasts. And when you start talking about the Feast of trumpets and the Feast of Tabernacles and Passover and so forth, man, they start understanding that. And when they realize that their Messiah has already filled the first four feasts, that was an open door for salvation. Amen? And Luke 19. You know, God's not forgotten you. Even when the enemy tells you he has. He, sometimes he doesn't answer your prayer the way you expect him to, does he? <laughs> In verse 43, Luke 19, it says, For days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment around you, surround you, and close you in on every side, and level you. And your children within you to the ground. And they will not leave in you one stone upon another because you did not know the time of your visitation. And now he's speaking to Israel because when the Lord came there, they didn't realize it was him, their true Messiah. And what had happened is multiple destructions came to Israel and the captivities and so forth. And one of the things that happens is that where are visitations of God for me and you? The Lord, by his spirit, will visit me and you and do seasons. There are special visitations that he has predestined for you as you cooperate with certain things. Sometimes you don't even realize how many times he's already come and gone. But we weren't attentive to it. You know, say, well, wouldn't I know if the Lord was there? Not if you're dull. Not if both eyes are off of everything, but only on what you're doing. You will miss. And that's what we don't want to do. We don't want to get caught up in works. We don't want to get caught up in ourself. We don't want to get entangled in the affairs of the world. We want to stay in a place of surrender survival keeps people but did you ever see somebody in the water who couldn't swim they're in survival and to kick and scream I, I used to fly search and rescue and rescue people that were drowning and you couldn't approach them face to face because they try and grab you you'd have to go underwater and come from the back and grab them and put them in a hold so they couldn't budge and sometimes pilots would come out of a eject from a plane and they'd be in a raft and you'd come up to them and, and you pull out a, your blade and cut the raft and sink it. And they start freaking out. But that raft had to go underwater or get sucked up in the roller blades when we got picked up. And it's, sometimes, it's so loud you can't speak to the person. You try and yell until, unless the 
the helicopter moved away. But in this, there is an area where people become so panicky that even somebody in quicksand, what happens when somebody moves more in quicksand? They sink more. That's what survival mode does to people. They sink quicker. And they can't move. It paralyzes them. But surrender mode will allow you to wait. You know, really, you can tread water for days. No matter where you are, you just, every time you just hold your breath. When you hold your breath, you float to the top. Then you exhale, you go under a little bit, and you, and you hold your breath. And, and if you, you can do that for days. So people can tread water for days and not waste so much energy if you just know how to do it. And that takes cooperation because you got to be trained to do those things, right? Amen? So God is trying to get us to our next due season where there is a rain of blessings, and we don't want to miss it. They, you know, again, they didn't know or understand the time of his visitation of rescue. They were distracted by evil. How many times did God try to rescue me and you? And we were distracted. We didn't realize, we, we, we missed the visitation. I mean, you could have been at a stop sign and, or, or a red light and somebody was in front of you and it could have been a sign on the back, Jesus is after you. And you still wouldn't have got it. There could have been a tractor trailer drive by. You know, Jesus loves you. And, you know, and we still didn't get it. God sent multiple people across our path for many years. And we kept missing it and missing it and missing it. And there are people dead in hell because they missed it so many times. In Daniel chapter 11, In verse 32, it says, Those who do wickedly against the covenant, he shall corrupt with flattery. But the people who know their God shall be strong and carry out what? Great exploits. And those are the people who understand shall instruct many. Yet for many days they will fall by the sword and flame, by captivity and plundering. Now when they fall, they shall be aided with a little help, but many shall join with them by intrigue. And some of those of understanding shall fall to refine them, purify them, and make them white until the time of the what? End. Because it is still for the appointed time. Let me tell you, there's still an appointed time that's coming. Tribulation still must come. There's still... Three other feasts that must be fulfilled. That's a part of the journey, isn't it? But even in our journey, there's appointed seasons, due seasons for me and you for showers of blessing, showers of revival, showers of refreshing, showers of reconciliation, showers, all kinds of movements of God. In Psalm 1. You know, all of a sudden it seems like the Lord, this, this due season, all kinds of things are happening. It could be three or four days and it's like, whoa, this is glory. If this is what it's going to be like, man, I love it. And all of a sudden, boom, he's gone. What happened? What's going on? Did I do something wrong? Stay on the journey. I'll be back in due season. Then he wants you to walk by faith, not blind, but to be able to see. Now he wants you to cooperate. He wants you to be consistent. He wants you to be in fellowship, abiding in his word and prayer, worship and praise, and in fellowship and unity. In Psalm chapter 1, verse 1, would you read it? 
Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor sits in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in what? It's season. It's called due season. Though whose leaf shall not wither, and whatever he does shall what? Prosper. But there's something very important. He said he rejected ungodly counsel. So he must have accepted godly counsel. Amen? And what happened? It led him into a place of due season where showers of blessing came. Amen? That's an area where you and I must endure to. We must endure it. There will be resistance in every area of our life. Too many people run and not willing to battle or fight. In Matthew 24, Matthew 24 and verse 40, 45. Would you read it with me, please? Who then is what? Faithful and wise servant, whom his master made ruler over his household to give them food and what? Due season, that's provision, isn't it? So there's something that we have to be is what? Faithful. That means consistent. We got to stay on course no matter what. Bless is that servant whom his master, when he comes, will find him so doing. Assuredly, I say to you that he will make him ruler over all of his goods. Hello. Why? Because he was promoted in due season. Amen? You know, so many people can't wait. They want to jump. And they miss the due season. And they fall into survival mode instead of surrender mode because they jumped. See, that instead of going up each stair in the process... They go to the third stair and want to jump to the seventh stair. Well, they just miss due season. Then they have to go all the way around and wait, and they wonder why God isn't doing what he promised to do. Because we didn't do what we promised to do. Go to Habakkuk. Between Nahum and Zephaniah. <laughs> you don't want to be considered a jumper, right? <laughs> a dancer is different than a jumper. <laughs> Habakkuk chapter 2. In verse 2. Would you read it with me? Is everybody there? In verse 2. Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. Too many people are doing things out of time. And they missed the due season. But at the end, it will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it. Because it will surely come. It will not tarry. It will come. Your due season will come. You just got to maintain that cooperation. Amen. It is a vision. It's associated with God's time. Not our time. Everybody is in an area of want, but the Lord says he meets your needs. So 
those who wait on the Lord. We're to be waiting on the Lord, but still cooperating. Waiting doesn't mean you don't do anything. You know what a waiter does? He serves. Hallelujah. In Luke 16. In verse 10. Luke 16 and verse 10. Let's read it together. He who is faithful in what is what? Least is faithful also in much. And he who is unjust in what is least is also what? Unjust in what is much. Therefore, if you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to you your trust to the true riches? Hmm. And if you have been faithful in what is another man's, who will give you what is your own? No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. So in this, you know, there's that place where God looks at us and he gives us little things, and sometimes we just neglect those little things because we're not faithful in it. You know, if you have a job and you don't show up, you don't have a job. If you don't pay your rent, you don't have a place to sleep. So if you're not faithful with the little things at your job and your boss can't trust you with the little things, you can't get promoted, can you? And if you don't show up enough at your job to know that you are like-minded with your boss, see, one of the things God always tries to do is get us like-minded. He's always, that was Paul's desire. He said something, he said, Timothy was the only one that was like-minded with me. Out of all of the disciples, Timothy was the only one that was like-minded with him. So he could trust Timothy. He sent Timothy out more because he was like-minded. He, he knew that Timothy would make the same decisions he was. Why? Because he was making the same decisions Christ was. But inconsistencies of the little things will not bring a promotion for more things. Does everybody get it? You know, there's a lot of people wanting to serve the Lord in all kinds of areas, and God isn't going to promote us until we're consistent. Amen? And if we're not faithful with a little, we won't get any more. In fact, we'll end up losing what we have. Proverbs 15. Is everybody okay? Are you getting this? Due season. Proverbs 15 and verse 22. Let's speak it together. Without what? Counsel plans go away. But in the multitude of counselors, they are established. A man has joy by the answer of his mouth, and a word spoken in due season, how good it is. The way of life winds up upward, winds upward for the wise, that he may turn away from hell below. The Lord will destroy the house of the proud, but he will establish the boundary of the widow. So we see here that in this, a word in due season. Look at it, if you're not paying attention, if you're not consistent, if you're not diligent, you're going to miss that word. You're going to miss it. You're going to miss that word. We don't gather together for a Bible study. We gather together for training because we want to get a word in season. Does everybody understand that? How many times have we gathered together and all of a sudden, yes, gosh, Lord. 
That's what I've been waiting for. I, need, I needed a, that turn. I needed that encouragement. I, I needed that shift. I, I needed that word. So when we're away from fellowshipping and coming under the word, well, I know the word. Well, you religious prideful thing. So the devil's got you convinced that you don't need to fellowship because you just got it all by yourself. Oh, God's going to use you mightily. Not. Why? Because he can't trust you with just showing up. Okay. We'll go to the next one. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Verse 2. You know, I, many people I meet, and one of the things they start talking about what God was doing with them. I said was, not what he is. When they start talking about what God was doing with them, they're out of position. Because when you're in position, God is doing something now. Because he's the God of now. Second Timothy chapter 2 and I mean, uh, chapter 4, verse 2. What does it say? Preach the word. Be ready when? In season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned to religion. Oh, fables. We're to be ready in season and out. So your due season isn't here yet. Well, you're still to be maintaining. Doesn't matter. God will still provide. And, but when you hit that due season, I'm telling you, the, the, the blessings of the showers of blessing will come. There'll be a period of time for multiple days. Then all of a sudden, whoa, this is awesome. Why I want this all the time. And then it will end. That's how he operates. And then you get back on track and you maintain and you learn and you burn. You burn through the soul. You can continue exchange. You continue to shed. And as certain things are happening, he's exposing more and more stuff that you need to die to. He starts showing the areas of fear, anxiety, stress, and all the other stuff. Bad mistakes, vows that we made that we should have never made. Things that we did we shouldn't have done. Things that he's saying to bring repentance into these areas. Why? So we can have access to them. Amen? In Galatians 4. Galatians chapter 4, verse 1. Galatians 4, 1. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together, please. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, does not differ at all from a slave, though he is master of all. But under what? Guardians and stewards until the time appointed by the Father. Even so, when we were children... We're in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father, which is representation of daddy. Again, we're on, there's a time when we are sent out. Other than that, we are under guardians, amen, and stewards so that there is a training. So many times people move before time. They send themselves out 
and they miss the due season. And it takes a long time for that. And they have to go all the way back around. Why? Because rebellion, we know, is a fruit of witchcraft, isn't it? And then the Lord says, who's bewitched you? Why you started walking in the spirit, now you're in the flesh. Who's bewitched you? Why you were surrendering, and now you're in survival. Why are you trusting in you instead of me, he says. See, there can be a quick shift in where we miss due season and it takes a longer period of time to hit that place of the showers of blessing. Is everybody okay? Guardians and stewards to a appointed time. Remember, the devil loves to push us and the Holy Spirit leads us. Too many individuals allow themselves to be pushed with anxiousness instead of be led by the Spirit. In James chapter 1, James chapter 1 and verse 2. Let's speak it together. My brother, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Various trials are times and seasons. God knows. Sometimes he's the one setting them up. Why? He's trying to expose us. He's trying to free us. He's trying to heal us. But we continue to refuse. So count it all joy when you're falling on various trials. Verse 3, knowing that the what? Testing of your faith produces patience. That word faith means spiritual sight. The testing of your vision. But let patience, which is also known as endurance... Have its what? Perfect work that you may be what? Perfect and complete, lacking what? Nothing. Lacking nothing. And if any of you lacks wisdom, whoa, he's saying, come on, man. You don't have wisdom. Spiritualism, you may have carnal wisdom, you may have intellectual wisdom, but you don't have the wisdom of the Spirit. And if you lack, any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives it to all liberally and without reproach. It will be given to him. But let him ask in what? Faith. With no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. Wow. He is what? Double-minded man, unstable in all of his ways. Unstable. Unstable. Inconsistent. Various trials, times and seasons. What, so if we're not enduring in these things, things aren't, if we're not allowing God to expose these things in us, he's saying you lack wisdom. Proverbs 2. I've heard people say, don't pray for patience. I said, what? Oh, man, I'll tell you, if you ask God for patience, you're going to go through all kinds of hell. Patience is endurance. You better pray for it. Or you will go through hell. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 1. Let's speak this together. Is everybody there? Powerful. My son or daughter, if you receive my words and treasure my commandments within you so that you incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding. Yes, if you cry out for discernment and lift up your voice for understanding. If you seek her as silver and search for her as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the what? Fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. 
He is a shield to those who walk uprightly. He guards the path of justice. He preserves the way of his saints. Then you will understand righteousness and justice, equity, and every good thing. Wow, every good path. When wisdom enters your heart and knowledge is pleasant to your soul because you desire it now, discretion will preserve you. Understanding will keep you to deliver you from the way of evil, from the man who speaks perverse things and from those who leave the paths of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness, who rejoice in doing evil and delight in perversity of the wicked, whose ways are crooked and who are devious in their paths, to deliver you from the immoral woman, from the seductress who flatters with her words, who forsakes the compa companion of her youth, and forgets the covenant of her God. For her house leads down to death, and her paths to the dead. None who go to her return, nor do they regain the paths of life. So you may walk in the way of goodness, and keep the paths of righteousness. For the upright will dwell in the land, and the blameless will remain in it. But the wicked will be cut off from the earth, and the unfaithful will be uprooted from it. Wisdom. And I'm going to close at 1 Timothy 6. Ask for wisdom. First Timothy chapter 6. In verse 11, would you read it with me? 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 11. But you, O man of God, flee these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith, which is fight for vision. Fight for spiritual sight. Lay hold on eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. I urge you in the sight of God who gives life to all things before Christ Jesus who witnessed the good confession before Pontius Pilate that you keep this commandment without spot, blameless until our Lord Jesus Christ is appearing which he will manifest in his own time. He was blessed and the only continent and the king of kings and lord of lords, who alone has immortality dwelling in an unapproachable light, who no man has seen or can see, to whom be honor and everlasting power. Amen. Due season. It's coming. Maintain it. I can guarantee you the enemy don't want you to get there. Be consistent. Stay on track. No matter what it takes. Don't be moved by your emotions. Don't be moved by circumstances. Don't be moved. Stand. See it all the way through. Keep one eye on the journey and one eye on your destination. Keep one eye on the Lord all the time and one eye on the things that, that's happening. And when the Lord is near, put both eyes on Him and He'll direct you what you got to do. Amen? But ask for wisdom. Praise God. Father, we thank You for Your Word. I apply the blood of Jesus upon this seed and ask that you grow it and bear fruit for your glory. And that revelation and impartation will be established with this seed today that we may reach each due season that you have for us, not grow weary or be misled, but stand fast all the way through. And thanking you for the next visitation and showers of blessing in our due season in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Be blessed.